In this video, I'm going to show you how to export photos in both Lightroom Classic CC and Lightroom CC. I have to say this is one area where Lightroom CC really lets itself down in comparison to the older version, which is Classic CC. So we're going to start in Classic CC and I'll show you the simple version using Standard CC at the end. Here's a photo I captured in Latvia and I'm going to select a few of these different photographs and I want to export them. So I've selected the images that I want to be included in my export and you can do Command or Control A to select all of the images or you can just select a few of them. So I'm deselecting a few of these now. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to File and Export. And here you'll see some custom settings to export your photos. So this seems like a really simple step, but there's a bunch of little features that you need to know about in this section. So that's what we're going to cover for the most part of this video. You'll see on the left hand side, I also have user presets. So I've standard full size sales page. These are presets that I've created for the different uses that I typically have for my photos. I'll go over those in just a moment. But for now, we'll just start with um, standard or user presets. We don't actually have to select anything here because we're going to make our own. So I'm selecting six different images I want to export here. And I'm going to export them to my desktop. I can choose where I'd like these to go by pressing this button. But nine times out of ten, I export to my desktop and I move them around on my computer afterwards. That way, it's always easy for me to find it. I might occasionally export straight into the Dropbox so I can leave my computer alone and know that they're going to be uploaded to the cloud. What I'll also do if I'm exporting more than one photo is I'll put them into a subfolder. So I'm going to create a subfolder here by selecting this icon and I'm going to put in Riga Latvia. Well, it's actually outside Riga, as you can probably guess. But Riga Latvia, and then usually I do you know, the, the years. So this was shot in 2017. So Riga Latvia 2017. I can also select add to this catalog. Now I never do this, but what this will do is once the image is exported, is it will add it back into Lightroom. The reason you might want to do that is because you might want to have the finished photo in Lightroom because currently you have the finished photo, but it's, nothing's applied, nothing's finalized until you press the export button. They're all non-destructive edits. So this makes a finished photo and it puts it in your Lightroom. And then if you want to make different adjustments, you don't lose that original photograph. I never use this though. If you're exporting and you already have these files exported in this location, you'll be asked what to do if you leave this as standard, or you can say, okay, choose a name, choose a new name for the exported file, or overwrite without warning or skip. I like to be asked what to do. Typically, it doesn't come up very often. Then we have file naming. We can rename the original file name, but if you selected you know, photo number one, number eight, number 17, it's going to start to look a little bit funny in your export folder. You'll see all these different numbers. I like oftentimes to export them with new file names. So I'll rename to a custom name and then I'll add a sequence. But there's a bunch of settings here. So you can do custom name, custom name and then the original file number, custom name and sequence, custom name X of Y, so number one of 17, date, file name, file name, sequence, or file name. I'm going to do custom name sequence, and I'm going to call this um, Riga River Cruise. So Riga River Cruise. And I'm going to leave this at one as the start number and keep it lowercase. So as they export, there'll be Riga River Cruise one, two, three, four, etc. There's a video section here, but this is one that I don't use because I don't think I ever managed video inside Lightroom, so I'll keep that closed. The next setting is file settings. So here we have JPEG, but there's also PSD, which is for Photoshop, TIFF, that allows for some transparency. It's a, technically a higher quality image file. DNG, that's a raw file or the original. I think um, for me, it's CR2, as you can see down here. Um, I pretty much always, I don't think I've ever exported anything other than JPEG and I don't see why you'd want to either. If you do need the raw file, you can find this image inside the folder very easily just by right clicking and saying show in folder or show in finder. We also have quality. So here, if I'm doing anything related to print, anything related to social media, pretty much most scenarios, I'll leave it on 100 because I want to have the maximum quality possible. If however, I'm uploading to my own website, I might bring that quality down to 70 to 80, something like that. 
It's not because I don't value the quality of my images, but we put a lot of photos on our website and that really slows the website down if you don't try and save some of that file size by compressing it a little bit inside of Lightroom. And Lightroom does an okay job of it. So I might set it to 70 here. You can also, instead of selecting the quality, you can limit the file size. You notice when I select this, the quality selection is gone. And maybe you put in 500 kilobytes. That means it's half a megabyte. So for example, if you're texting it to someone or you're sending it over an email, you might not wanna have like a 20 megabyte image going in your, in your email, take forever to send. So instead you set it here. Can't say I ever really use this, I just resize my images. The next section is image sizing. We have one here that says resize to fit the long edge, the short edge. So let's say you've got a, a photo that is 100 pixels wide and 80 pixels tall. Obviously the 100 pixels wide is going to be the long edge and the 80 pixels tall is going to be the short edge. So you can constrain your image to be a certain number of pixels. You can also buy, do it by width and height, dimensions, megapixels, percentage, etc. Most of the time, and it depends on what I'm exporting for, I'll leave it at 2048. That's the go-to standard setting for Facebook and Instagram. That's where you'll get the best quality images when you upload them. Uh, it's been like that for many years now. They changed it a lot for a long time, but 2048 is pretty standard. That's my standard user preset. I keep the resolution at 300 pixels per inch too. I don't need to select don't enlarge because I don't really have any photos that are fewer than 2048. Sometimes though, I will export to 700 pixels. That's what we use on expertphotography.com. Um, for the emails I send out, I believe they're 600. So I do often change this in here or I use one of my presets that are here already. I think it's 940 for a sales page. So there are a number of different scenarios um, if you've got your own website, you'll have your own numbers you're dealing with. That's where you enter it here. Long edge is what I typically go for because I don't. I want all the images to be the same size. So if someone prints them, they're going to be the same size uh, files. Um, if it's going on my website, I don't want it to be 700 pixels tall because that's going to take the whole screen up. I'm happy to have a little bit of margin on either side. So long edge is my standard here. Usually when I export, I'm exporting for the screen. So I will set this to screen, not matte or glossy paper, and I'll add a standard amount of sharpening. Just because when you crop it down to a smaller size, um, you, you can lose some of that sharpness. Keep it on standard, maybe low if you don't like the look, or high if you, if you really like it sharp. Um, if I'm printing, I'll obviously make sure that I select the right paper here. Typically I print onto matte paper, so I would select matte paper in here and keep it probably high for print. Metadata is um, metadata is quite important. So the metadata in your files will tell you who shot the photo. It can have contacts and copyright information, the camera use, the location, the, um, the lens, everything, all the camera settings. Some of this you might not want to share because it's personal information, uh, but oftentimes it's good. Let's say you export a photo onto your website and you're worried about someone stealing it. Well, if you export it with metadata, someone steals it and uploads it on their website, you can say, look, this metadata shows that it's my photo. Now, they can strip this out themselves later on if they want to, but most people are just going to take a photo and upload it again. Metadata can actually, actually be really useful. A couple of years ago, I was in Berlin and I was looking for a present for my sister's birthday. And my brother had been a couple of years before and he'd seen this teddy bear shop that had uh, a teddy bear of the dog that we have at home. Quite a rare breed, it's an Airedale ter Terrier. You don't see them very often. So to find a teddy bear of it is quite rare. Um, and I was like, I text someone, I said, where did you find this? He's like, oh, I have no idea. It was somewhere near Alexanderplatz, here's the photo. I took the photo, I put it onto my computer, uploaded it to a website to see the metadata, makes it a little bit easier that way. And I found out the exact location of this shop and I was able to go there and buy it. It was much, uh, it was very useful to have the metadata on the image in this scenario. So you might want to include metadata or you might just want copyright and contact info. You can select this yourself. It's really up to you. Watermarking. Um, I don't watermark my images. I don't like the look. I think it's distracting and I'm not really sharing anything that is particularly groundbreaking. If it goes on Facebook, you know, no one's going to steal it from Facebook and put it on there, you know, print it off. Maybe they, I saw someone posted one of my photos on Instagram. I'm, I'm indifferent, you know. Um, if you do want to edit a watermark, you can select a watermark that you want to use here. So you can see 
got Joshua Dunlop in the bottom corner here. Or you might want to upload your own PNG or JPEG that's going to overlay the image. So you might have a nice signature. You can overlay that using this tool here. And then you have the option of after export, what do you want to do? I always select nothing. Some, sometimes you might want to open up in Photoshop or another application so you can continue processing it. Um, I just say do nothing. If I want to do anything with it later, I can do that myself. Before we finish though, as this is a standard, what I might do is save it as a preset. So I have mine ordered with 0, 0, 0, 0001, 0, 02, et cetera. So I'm going to do 09.pel2.0. Um, and I can create this preset. And now, whenever I want to export with these same settings, I can come into Lightroom, press this, and then hit export, and they're going to export for me. So that's Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. We're going to move over now to Adobe Lightroom CC, and you'll see that it is quite restricted in comparison to Classic CC. So here's a photograph that I edited in another video. Um, I think we can do better than this. Let's grab this one. And let's say I want to export this. Well, the wording is different inside Lightroom CC than it is Classic CC. No longer do we have export, we have save to. So a couple of different options here. You can right click the image and say save to. You can go up to the top here and go file, save to. Or you can go to this little icon up here, which is the arrow pointing up from a box, and you can save to. Uh, there's also share to the web. This is pretty cool. If you, uh, it's just getting a URL, you can copy that URL and then paste it onto your web browser and that image will be uploaded on the internet, internet and you can see it. Uh, it's not really what we're covering in this video. We touched on that in a future video. Um, I'm going to save to, and this is where it gets a little bit disappointing because you'll see the options here are what file type do I want? So I'm going to have JPEG, or we can have original with settings. The JPEG is going to be the edited photo, everything's done, export it, post it on Facebook. Original with settings is going to be the CR2 raw file for me, plus the editing uh, file. There's a little file next to that photo that's going to have all of the adjustments I've made. So I'm going to do JPEG. Small restricts your image size to 2048 pixels. Uh, full size is going to be, of course, full size and then custom is going to be whatever you set it to. Let's say small in this case, hit save. And unfortunately, that's all the options you have with Adobe Lightroom CC. It's a little bit limited. Again, think of this like an advanced version of the mobile app. It has some great features. It does a lot of things. And maybe, you know what, exporting photos, maybe not where you need the most powerful features, but just to show you there is a difference there between the two softwares. To the two softwares. So hopefully that's been helpful to you. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. Thanks for watching. Thank you.